Hi, everyone. Everyone awake after lunch? No one's going to doze off? I'm going to try and make it as interesting as possible. So we will start there. Um, so just quickly, my name is Kathleen Stokes, and I'm a senior researcher at an organization in the UK called Nesta. And we support innovation for public benefit through a variety of ways, including policy and research, practical activities in our innovation lab, but also through investments and through skills development. And as Kushpi very kindly shared with us, what I want to talk to you about today is understanding the collaborative economy's impact. Now, to start with that, we will be focusing primarily on economic and social impact, but some of the messages I have, I think, also apply to questions around environmental impact, cultural impact, and any other form that you might be considering today. Now, it seems to me that this is actually two questions rather than one statement. First, what exactly is the impact of the collaborative economy? And second, how do we start to understand it? And for this, I think it's important for us to look back over the last year. There has been a lot of excitement about the collaborative economy, but also a lot of concern. In recent years, we've seen headlines that have told us that this is going to be the symptom of a sick economy, that this might be a new form of growth that could potentially also have positive environmental impact. It also seems to be something that could be rebuilding trust and social capital in our communities, or it could also be creating entirely new economic and social systems, whether that be for good or for bad. Now, we read these things, we've questioned them. Oftentimes there is a kernel of truth to them, but if we put our critical hats on for a second, I think we need to follow the words of public enemy and don't believe the hype. What exactly is happening and can we actually start to understand this? If we're hearing these headlines, how do we know that this is actually the case? And for that, I'm gonna take another cultural appropriation and I'm gonna ask, show me the evidence. After all, if we can't demonstrate the impact that's being claimed here, how do we know that it's actually true? So, evidence is a word that I think is really important here, and for a few reasons. One, if we want to understand what's happening, we need to be more systematic and rigorous about how we're actually tracking that, finding ways of measuring it, and also ways to compare impact across organizations and sectors. And secondly, there's something very important about how we can then use that research and evidence to check the claims that are being made more broadly. If something's completely untrue, how do we actually go against that and say this is not what's happening, or actually it's completely different? And when we're doing research and evidence and trying to understand impact, there is a real positive effect here. And that is the fact that if we can find instances where there is positive social or economic impact, or environmental for that matter, we can actually recognize and learn from those who are at the forefront or respond to instances where there may be negative or unattended effects so that they can actually start to address those challenges they may be facing. And how many of you are working within a collaborative platform or organization? Oh, good, fantastic, mixed crowd. Any of you guys actually monitor, evaluate your impact? Do you have a clear sense of what your impact is? I see one hand. How many of you have to talk to policymakers or have to talk to funders and demonstrate what you're doing is important or different? Many more hands, fantastic. Actually taking a more rigorous approach to understand and measure your impact is really important because this can give you the tools to be able to communicate not only with funders but with policymakers and the public more generally. Now I bring this up because we're at a really interesting time. There is a growing community of people who are undertaking research, looking at the impact of the collaborative economy, and starting to be a bit more careful to understand this. We are seeing in academia institutions like the University of Southampton, NYU, University of Utrecht, who are wondering what's happening and starting to produce research. Equally, there are some platforms that are starting to monitor and evaluate their impact, whether that be big organizations like Airbnb, or small time banks in the UK like Echo. And alongside that, we have a growing number of interested organizations who may not be operating directly in the collaborative economy, but who want to contribute some sort of research and knowledge to the space that can be useful for all of us. So we share and Lafing last year created Cher Revolution. We have PwC that's been doing a lot looking at the growth of the space. And Nesta as well has been trying to do a little bit around what's happening in the UK. Now, when we look across this, there's a question of what kind of information and research are we actually starting to capture right now? 
Many of us have seen these, and these are probably some of the most common types of research that get published. They talk a lot about the overall growth, participation rates, and I suppose size of the collaborative economy. And when this is a really new space, this is very helpful just to try and understand what's out there. And it also shows us, I think quite honestly, that we do love a good circular infographic, no? <laughs> but looking more closely, how much does this tell you about what's happening in a household? How is this affecting our local community? These things are great for a beginner's understanding, but we need to think about other types of research as well that can give us more nuanced details and actually start to show where this is going more long term. And there is other research that's starting to do that. We've seen across a number of papers and product or research reports, some certain lessons are coming out. For one, the collaborative economy definitely is growing, but it's still a minority activity. And I think that's really important for us to remember when we talk about this big impact that it's having. Right now, most people in the world aren't participating on these platforms. That could change, but we need to remind ourselves about the present context. Secondly, we've got a lot of different conditions for inclusion. And platforms might be very open and very community focused, but sometimes you need to have an internet connection to take part. Who does that exclude? Likewise, do you have to have a certain amount of capital or assets to be part of these activities? What is the exact level of inclusion within this space? It's still being kind of fleshed out. Another question is around improved costs. And I think there has been a fair bit of research that's shown us that in essence, these platforms can lower costs. That can have an impact on the quality of life. And some people are suggesting that that can actually have benefits on pe for people with lower incomes. But is that the same across all platforms? Perhaps not. And also, where is that more useful? Leading on to that as well, there's an interesting notion around flexibility. A lot of these platforms are showing new ways and making it easier to be flexible in the things you consume, the people that you connect with, and also, in particular, the ways that we work. However, the question of choice and inequality also come out of this as well. Is complete freedom and flexibility something that is actually benefiting everyone in the same way? And a rather obvious one, collaborative economy activities do seem to be more prevalent and potentially disruptive in sectors such as transport and tourism. But there's other areas when we talk about this that haven't necessarily felt the reverberations of a decentralized platform yet. Lastly, oftentimes when we look at research, the influence of regulators and policymakers is huge. How they decide to manage and encourage or discourage activities in this area will have a big impact on who can participate and even what platforms are able to be existing in a local context. And I put the last one up here more as a question because I think we are hearing a lot about the potential of how the collaborative economy can change our concept of ownership. But the research that we've seen I don't think has said anything quite definitive yet. So this could be something we look at further. And now even with these emerging comments about what's happening, I have to do the researcher thing and note that these all depend on the interaction, question, platform, organization, sector, and wider context where this research has been done. And that's important because when we take some of these findings and papers, it's very easy to blanket it across the entire space, but actually we need to get a lot better at thinking about is this happening in this community with this specific platform? Is this happening in a specific sector? And be a lot more nuanced about the research that we're ca capturing here. So there are some emerging findings, there's a growing research community, but there is a big question. Is that everything we really want to know about the impact of the collaborative economy? I think there's a lot more that we can say and there's probably some really pressing issues that we'd like to explore further. And so instead of me giving you a list and telling you here's what we should be looking at, here are the big questions for the collaborative economy, I'd like to disrupt the session for a second. You're going to see some post-it notes on seats. And what we'd love to do for two seconds is Talk to your neighbor for one minute, what I say. What is your most pressing question around impact in the collaborative economy? Talk to the person next to you, write it down on that paper, and my colleague Sophie here will collect those at the end just at the door, and we can share that as an open document so we can start to have a more common sense of what the big questions are, and that can potentially help us to start better evaluating and researching this area. So, do you guys want to take one minute and do that really quickly? Ideally, speak to someone you don't know. Okay, thank you guys, that's great.
And I'm going to keep talking now, so you can choose to listen, but you don't have to if you don't want to. I love the fact that there's so much discussion happening right now because that shows to me how little we actually really know right now. There's so many questions that we need to be thinking about and actually interrogating further. And so thank you for taking a second to talk about that, write this down on a piece of paper. We will very happily make that into an open document at the end and that can hopefully be something we all use going forward. Um, and I have skipped ahead, goodness, sorry. Um, but with so many questions that remain unanswered, Finding the right questions is a first step, but it doesn't mean that we can just go ahead and create all of these answers. I think this is also important to recognize how difficult it is to actually start to understand the impact of the collaborative economy. And actually, a lot of the questions that you've just discussed, think for a second, how do you define that type of impact? What kinds of indicators and measures could be used to actually test that? Where would you actually start to look into these things? It's hard, and so for that very reason, a lot of researchers and platforms alike are really at a point right now where they're trying to understand what's happening, wanting to look into this further, but they're still grappling with questions around definitions, the size, the scale. And likewise, research and understanding impact is going to take time and skills and have costs involved that not everyone is able to contribute. And that's particularly the case for small platforms in this area. When you're running and trying to work in this emergent area, how can you actually take a second, work with a researcher to actually start to see what's happening? Now, alongside with it being challenging, and I think recognizing that it is, we also have to recognize that there's risks involved with understanding impact. What happens if you find out that your fantastic platform that's gonna save the world isn't actually doing very much? Or worse yet, what if it has negative effects on certain parts of your user group? If you share that information, if you commit to looking at your impact, what do you do? Do you have to act on that evidence? Likewise, what happens if your research is negatively received, whether for the quality of it or perhaps because actually you don't really know what's happening? Now, these are all considerations for organizations in the collaborative economy to really think about when they want to understand their impact. But it doesn't mean that this is worth shying away from. If anything, going through that process can be incredibly worthwhile. For instance, in the UK, a time bank named Spice recently did their first external evaluation. And they found that the, actually what their findings showed them were able to help improve their service and make them a better offering for users. Likewise, bigger organizations like Airbnb have for a long time been working with local researchers and economists in particular to track their impact. And this has been helpful for when they have to go into discussions with local stakeholders who are perhaps concerned about what's happening on the ground. And using the slightly, um, slightly risky example, but bear with me here. Even when you have research that's maybe not good or maybe overstretching its limits, so Uber in the last year was talking a lot about the average income of its drivers in New York and San Francisco, um, also talking about the number of jobs they created. This had a huge amount of pushback. However, that pushback meant that others came into the discussion and actually started to share alternative measures that could be used to understand the impact of the collaborative economy on taxi drivers. So, there's a growing research community, we can see this is very challenging and risky, but there's also a worthwhile element of looking at impact more closely. And I think instead of thinking about the big questions right now, there's a really fundamental one that we could probably sort out today actually, which is if we want to see more research and evaluation and better understanding of impact in the collaborative economy, what do we need to do to have research and practice better connected? And there it goes. So two things seem really important, and I think there's a number of others, and hopefully you can discuss this afterwards in your panels. First thing is to actually think about the researchers that are starting to come around the collaborative economy. There's a lot of enthusiasm, willingness, and interest in helping to understand and support platforms and organizations so we can be really equipped with understanding this space. There's events that are happening, as with two days ago, there was a full day workshop before we share of researchers. Equally, universities like Namur and Utrecht are starting to bring together researchers. And even then, online, we can find places where researchers can start to exchange methods, talk about some of the bigger questions behind the scenes, such as the WeShare Research Network, which is on LinkedIn. It's perhaps not the most active one, but it's a starting point. And finding other ways to connect to this community and enable them to do research in the space could be really helpful for all of us. The second thing is how you start to connect research and practice directly. Now, I'm noticing I feel like there's a bit of a meta moment here looking at an event and an event right now. I'll leave that. Um, in essence, 
when we're trying to connect research and practice, how can platforms who have needs or who have questions actually reach out to this community and start to find ways of working together? Could they share data? Is there opportunity to do collaborative research? And equally, and very interestingly, how can the research that we're doing into impact be shared more widely so that we can all be better informed? Now, last, I think it was two weeks ago, Collaborative Economy and Collaborative Lab created a research library online. And it seems like a really promising first step because they're allowing researchers to publish openly their findings on the collaborative economy through a curated and rigorous process, but anyone can access that. So you don't have to go through this process of understanding your impact from scratch. You can look and see what's out there. And I think going forward, it's finding new and more ways of doing this kind of stuff so that, in essence, the collaborative economy can start to become more evidence-based and also, by being more evidence-based, be able to actually achieve what it wants. So, in essence, I think we can say two things today. First, if we look around, it's pretty clear that there is some um, impact from the collaborative economy, but we're still a long ways from actually understanding what that is. To do this and to really understand the collaborative economy, we need to think about how we can embed measurement, evaluation, and evidence into our work. And along with that, how can we start to bridge research and practice? So I'll leave that thought for today. I think this is a hopefully a useful starting point for the afternoon. And I just want to thank you all for taking the time to listen and say it's been a brilliant few days so far. And I hope that as these thoughts around impact develop, we can also find ways of sharing it with one another and hopefully see how this space develops in the next year. So thank you guys very much and enjoy the rest of the afternoon.